Hello, welcome back. This is the second uh, support video to uh, assist students of St George's College in making good use of our online learning service which is provided by the Moodle software which is an online learning environment package. Uh, we've, in the earlier video we looked at how to uh, log into the site, how to change your password, how to set up your profile and, um, and also just how to, how to navigate your, around the site in very general terms. What I want to do in this um, short video is just to walk you through some of the resources which will be available through your course page and also to, um, um, to make sure that, uh, to give you a chance to, to kind of look at how you might create forum posts, how you might read forum posts and um, and, and where you, how you might actually sign up for some additional resources as well. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into a web browser. Uh, suppose in this case uh, you're on the college website, but in fact all you, you actually you need to go to the Moodle site and the quickest way to get there is either to click on SGC Moodle, click on this link, or just to type sgcmoodle.net. But let's just click on the link for now it will take us directly to the site and of course we're not yet logged in so the first thing we're going to do is click on the login link um, sample as you might recall is my username I'm going to ask it to remember my um, password from my previous visit and now I'm going to log in now all the preferences that I set up last time will have been remembered so it's remembered my photo because it has my name and um, it remembers that this is the course for which I am enrolled at the college. And when I click on this, all of these other tabs on the left-hand side are still there because I told the program previously that I don't want my screen cluttered with all those extra folders. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to look at the resources which are available to students on a particular site. There are two kinds of forums. There's a news forum here, and the discussion forum. A news forum is a place for, for the teacher, the lecturer for the program or another staff member of the college to basically make an announcement to the group. So that's sharing information which we hope will be of interest to the group. In this case we're telling people that the advanced course information which had previously been sent to them by email is now actually available on the site and indeed they'll be able to find it. In fact you can see it on the left hand side side over here on the sidebar. Using the bread trail system I go back to F16. This everything over here adjusts for me as a result and if we go to discussion forum you notice it's telling me that there are two posts there that I haven't yet read because Mr. Sample is not very good at keeping up with his emails. So here are the two messages and the unread ones are tagged so they're easy for me to see. The first is a welcome message and if I, if I or anybody else in the class had wanted to respond to that welcome message, all we had to do was hit reply, and then a reply would could be typed in, and when you hit send, it goes to everybody in the forum. We won't do that for now because that's not something that I'm wanting to do to a live group. Um, again, going back to discussion forum on the bread trial, the other one is introductions. You can see that just earlier today I sent an email out to people and asked them to send information, to share information about themselves, their name, their location, why they've chosen to do the program from the 31st of March and what they're most looking forward to when they do this program. Again, all people have to do is to hit reply. When they do that, a reply will go to everybody in the forum. Now, of course, this message will also turn up in your email account. And if you hit reply in your email, then it will only come back to the person who sent the message. It will not go to the whole forum. So it is important that you log into the college website, to the online website, and that you actually reply through this screen rather than directly from your email account. If you're wanting to create a new topic in a discussion forum, then you go to discussion forum, you click on add new discussion topic, you give it a name, you type your message in here, you can use, you can add images, you can add video clips, you can attach files, you can use 
you can change fonts and so on. And then when you're ready to send it, you hit post a forum. And that will go to everybody who's in the class, not just the lecturer, but to everybody who's a member of this particular program. Again, I've just cancelled that because obviously I'm not actually wanting to send out a blank message to the people who are enrolled in this program. Suppose you're wanting to contact another member of the class, uh, somebody that you know is coming on the program, perhaps you don't have their email handy, or you simply just want to contact them briefly while you are actually on site. There is a way of doing that through the, um, through the Moodle system as well, so I'll just wait for my super slow St George's College internet access to load the page. I'll stop it and redo it because sometimes that speeds it up. Okay, and I'm going to go to participants. And participants, it shows me all 30 people who are registered for this class at this point in time. I can organize them by first name, although there's not a lot of reason for doing that. I can organize them by surname. And in just a second, it will have re-sorted re them according to surname. Now suppose I was wanting to send a message to this particular student. I click on that person's name and up here in the top right hand corner I can send them a message. And it's just like a little simple text message and it will go directly to them and they will, they will receive it I think as an email message as well as the next time they log into the machine, log into the account, it will be waiting for them. Okay, So it is possible to actually just send quick messages backwards and forwards and unlike a forum post a message remains private between the two individuals that have been sharing the message. So news forums, announcements by staff members, discussion forum, anybody, a student or a lecturer, can start a discussion and contribute to a discussion. Various other files can be attached. They might be Word files, they might be Moodle pages, they might be PDF files, they may be images such as this image here of Palestine in Old Testament times, okay? Go back to F16. Um, and of course, in the actual uh, program itself, as the program gets underway, we will be adding resources, files, and various other materials, PowerPoints, whatever, will be added in there for you as well. So this is your page for all the resources which are directly related to the program that you're doing at the college. And it's also the place where it's easy for you to ask questions, uh, questions of the college staff and questions of other participants, either before the course, during the course, or indeed for weeks and weeks and weeks and even months after the course. However, there are some other resources you might be interested in as well. If you go to Site Home rather than Dashboard, you'll see a number of other programs here. And these are resources which are shared between different programs. Tips for new pilgrims, alumni, maps and charts, places of interest, and reading. So let's, in order to access those, you need to sign into them because these are optional resources shared across more than one program. The way you join is simply you click on the title, you see the blue button, Enroll Me, and bingo, you are enrolled. And then straight away you'll begin to get access to other things, including, for example, suggestions for clothing, currency, other items, special requirements if you're coming on the Bethsaida archaeology dig, etc. Okay, back to site home. You might also want to sign up for maps and charts. Enroll me. And then you have access, for instance, here's a map of the Golan Heights showing uh, which part of the Golan Heights have been occupied by Israel since 1967. That may or may not be something you're interested in. Other online maps for ancient geography, a digital atlas of the Holy Land, and other material will be added in, in due course. One, one of these resources you may be particularly interested in is places of interest. This is a special Enroll me. This is a special set of links, uh, museums around Jerusalem, um, special sites around Jerusalem itself, um, sites in the south of the country, sites uh, in the centre of the country, and so on. Okay, around the lake and in Jordan. So, for example, 
this one here, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it's a link to a video. And you click on that, it'll bring up the video straight away. Um, you click on full screen and you're going to go straight into the video, which will give you an introduction to the history and the evolution of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Okay, so that's quite a useful resource. Um, what else have we got left to do? We haven't yet done extra readings. So the readings area, click on the name, click on enrol me, and then you'll have access to a growing set of resources. So here are a number of articles to do with Nazareth in the first century, in the Byzantine period. Um, a, a web link about Codex Sinaiticus, the oldest biblical manuscript or the oldest complete copy of the Bible and so on. And over time we will gradually enrich these resources so there will be more and more material there for you. Once you've joined one of these groups, of course, they show up on your dashboard. So the course in which you are enrolled plus the other optional sets of resources to which you have, um, to which you have signed up. Now the other thing which uh, I should just mention at this stage is what do you do if you need some extra help? What ha where will you go for extra help? Well the simplest way is to go back to the college website, go to the click on the link for SGC online. When that page comes up you'll find down the bottom there's a link on the side here for support. If you click on that um, you'll have the frequent, most frequently asked questions. How do I go about creating a user account? I can't remember my username, do I need to have a unique email address, etc. I've forgotten my username, what do I do now, etc. But also, if you need, there's something else where you need a slightly more technical assistance with your Moodle site, click on the link for students, and that will take you to the dedicated site put up by the Moodle organization, where you'll find lots and lots and lots of information, which will help you uh, resolve various problems that you may or may not be having with Moodle. Okay, So if you need more, slightly more kind of sophisticated resources, uh, more sophisticated assistance, you may well find that the, um, the Moodle site, Student Fact, is the, is the best place for you to be. So let's go back to um, our dashboard for a moment. What we've done in this video is we've looked at uh, we've looked at the resources that you'll find on the course page. We've looked at things like creating and reading um, forum posts. We've looked at messaging other students in a course. Uh, we've looked at adding these um, shared resources, tips for new pilgrims, maps and charts, places of interest, extra readings, and so on. And we've also looked at um, where you might find extra help. So I hope that gives you enough information to feel confident to explore the Moodle site and really begin to make it your own. And what we're hoping is that um, by taking some of our learning experiences online, even before you arrive here, you can begin to engage with the material, um, see what's coming up, read some of the background resources and so on. During the course, there'll be opportunities to interact with the lecturers, with other students, to, to share resources, to share websites, videos, photos and all the rest. And of course, long after the program ends, you and the other members of this particular program will have access to this site. You can continue to talk with each other. You continue to ask questions of the lecturers. You can continue to share insights and reflections. And we hope that will make the experience of coming to a program at St George's College so much richer and so much more rewarding. Finally, of course, as always, when you finish with your session, just go to the top right-hand corner, go down to the menu, click on Log Out, and you're done. Thank you very much.